preview is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. Hey guys, uh, Nick and Scott here, Hello. and we went to Ubisoft to check out a new game called Child of Light, which you may or may not have heard of. It is a very, very, very pretty mm -hmm. JRPG, but made by not Japanese people. Canadians. Canadians. <laughs> Canadian. It's a CJRPG. Yes. Oh, now I'm thinking about like a San Andreas RPG, a CJ oh. RPG. That would be a good game, but that's not what this no. is. No. This is a game about, I guess, an Austrian young girl. It's, it's a young Austrian princess mm -hmm. whose mother died, and then his father was feeling super lonely, so he married the wrong woman. Right. And everything went terrible. It's interesting. It's from uh, Jeffrey O'Hallam, who is the guy who wrote Far Cry 3, which is, if you go read about, like, one of the most fascinating, weird stories in games ever. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of his attempt, we're putting up an interview with him soon, but this is sort of his attempt at writing a game that is a little bit more positive and maybe less subversive in an antagonistic way. Um, and I, I think the reason Scott is here is because it is visual. Yeah. It's with you, the UbiArt engine, yeah. which is the one you probably know from Rayman Legends. It's the old, it's the first non-Rayman game to yeah. use the UbiArt framework engine. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing you notice about this game is that it is visually stunning. I it think so, looks yeah. like it looks like a two D watercolor painting. Mm -hmm. You can actually see, like when we first sat down, I said, "Whoa, look at that! You can see the texture of the watercolor paper yeah. on the on the on the background." Um, it's cool because it doesn't look exactly like Rayman. Like when no. someone tells you it's the Rayman engine, you're like, oh yeah, no, that does make sense. But it stylistically is is fully unique. Yeah, it's that. it's it's pulling from a lot of uh, John Bauer art. He's a fantasy art artist from the early 20th century, um, and the game is you know very heavy on watercolor and fantasy. Mm -hmm. uh, but the one thing that I kind of pulled me out of this entire world is all the enemies and all the other creatures that you encounter have this super fluid 2D look. Very convincing 2D look, yeah. But and the, the main character is a th clearly rendered 3D model, mm -hmm. which also suffers from the, um, I'm also an animation nerd, so warning. Uh, it's, her hair has like kind of Roger Rabbit ears. If you ever look at Roger Rabbit, now go YouTube Roger Rabbit, but his ears, even when he's not moving, his ears are going like this, like he's oh, underwater. See, I like that. I thought that was a so cool So her look. hair in this game is constantly moving even when she's still. It was mm -hmm. a little distracting. Maybe, but, yeah. Uh, that's purely animation nitpicking. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think it's, I did notice that, that it's a 3D model as well. Yeah. I thought it was slightly distracting, but the world is just so like compelling to explore mm -hmm. visually, and I, I hope they get weird with it in like later parts of the game. Um, narratively, it's kind of bonkers. It's like, Written entirely in rhyme. Entirely Like, in rhyme. the entire game script from start to finish, all 200 pages of it, yeah. I think he told us, is written in rhyme, which is I, ambitious. Very ambitious. <laughs> ambitious. So, uh, ambitious to the point in the, in the very beginning of the game you're seeing that he's struggling to make everything rhyme. It's a lot of rhymes. And I, I mean, if it's, not, it's not perfect rhyme. Mm -hmm. There are some... Some sentences have a few more, some phrases have a few more syllables than you right. might. <laughs> it's, it's not all an iambic pentameter. No, no, to say the least. So the combat is kind of the part where you see it and you're like, oh, that's the JRPG inspiration. And I will admit right off the bat, I'm not a huge RPG guy. Um, really? Believe it or not. Wow. Yeah, in case you didn't pick Sh up on that. Shocking. <laughs> yeah, uh, but there's a really cool system in this game, the, the timeline thing, mm -hmm. that uh, apparently is inspired by Grandia 2. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and trust the rest of the world on that because I haven't played it, but um, it does this really neat thing where as, over the course of a battle, there's a timeline at the bottom, and when you reach the end of the timeline, you get to attack, and enemies are also uh, forced to use this timeline, and that's sort of where the co-op yeah, there's a co-op yeah. element where one person is playing R, the main character, and right. the other one is playing uh, this, I can't remember the name, this light Sp character. Lightning bug, blue yeah. spark he, boy. He gets power from wishes, which is kind of how I get my power, but he can go off and a lot of the enemies are vulnerable to light, hence the title, yep. Child of Light, and so that person can go over and kind of blind the enemies and mm -hmm. slow their attacks down while your meter is recharging. And it's cool because on the timeline, like it could be an enemy's turn next, and then your co-op partner can grab the enemy and slow them down and then you're going the same speed so you actually get to attack maybe twice in one turn mm -hmm. or ahead of them. Exactly. It's pretty cool and it, I mean the direct comparison for the way the co-op stuff works for me was Mario Galaxy. Like mm -hmm. it looks like moving that sprite around in Mario Galaxy's sort of like co-op, couch yeah. co-op mode. Mm -hmm. uh, when I brought that up with a writer he said that that was kind of one of their inspirations but he was quick to note that they really wanted this to feel more vital. Right. Uh, 
than it does in Galaxy. In Galaxy, it's very much an afterthought. You just scrub up stuff on the screen. In this, like, it could, in theory, turn the tide of the battle completely. Yeah. And one other thing in the game is you're always collecting stuff, and there's it prides itself on saying there's unlimited crafting. So, mm. like, there's a huge crafting element to this. Yeah. So you'll get a bunch of different gems, and you'll have to combine the gems to make a bigger gem, which will eventually make weapons and mm -hmm. shields and stuff. So you're constantly collecting and crafting right. and figuring out the difference. And I'm, I, I mean, I didn't spend enough time with it to say whether or not it is an, how, how deep an RPG right. it is, how deep the combat gets. There's a big crazy skill tree, uh, but we just sort of got a, a taste of that. For me, what would make me come to Child of Light is how cool it looks. Um, that engine is just yeah. fascinating. I want every game, or more I games, to I, be built I, I, that I, it, it is a really underutilized engine, and I, I'm very excited to see what Ubisoft does with the Ubi art framework. It's also apparently a very flexible engine, because at one yeah. point I grabbed the mouse and started accidentally dragging elements of the game around the screen, and I broke it a little bit, so sorry about that. But yeah, uh, that's what we thought of Child of Light so far. If you are a JRPG fan, or someone who likes games that are really, really pretty, Definitely at least look at this and see what it is. Um, we are also putting up an interview with Jeffrey where he talks about something that I thought was crazy, exploring the middle ground between indie games like $10 indie games and AAA $60 games and that middle zone that doesn't really exist but probably will yeah. soon. So yeah, check that interview out. But yeah, that's, that's what we thought. Child of Light. Child of Light. So, you may have seen that footage of the protagonist of Child of Light and been like, damn, how can I get like a soft, hairless face like, like she has? Uh, that's where Dollar Shave Club comes in. For a few bucks a month, Dollar Shave Club ships amazing razors and other bathroom stuff right to your door. Their blades are just as good as the Big Shave Company's blades, but at a fraction of the price. They don't just sell razors either, they also have Dr. Carver's Easy Shave Butter and One Wipe Charlie's Wipes for Your Butt. Shave time, shave money. Join now at dollarshaveclub.com slash rev3games.